Hello everybody, this is the Goofsome Fox coming at you with two 450 cost rated matches here in Shars Gelguk. This first match here is going to be a space match with the second one being a ground match. And Shars Gelguk is a 450 cost raid that was recently added to the Recycle Ticket Store as part of the pre-6 anniversary event. And this is a suit that I have really been wanting to try for a long while now. Uh, since its release as a token pack suit, but uh, if you're familiar with me, I really don't buy the token packs like that. Uh, only one I've ever gotten has been for the Engage Zero. Um, other than that, yeah, I typically just wait for these kind of suits to end up either as uh, limited mission suits, or like event suits, or um, you know, recycle ticket suits, maybe DP if they find their way there. I typically just wait for these suits to become, you know, more readily available, um, just as in a way that I don't have to spend real money. And Charles Gilguk here is really no exception to that, but um, playing it now, I can really see why when this suit released, it really was not considered to be one of the best suits in the game, to put it lightly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go into my reasonings, um, later into the video about that, but for now I just want to start by going over some of the, uh, you know, basics with this mobile suit here, and as I mentioned, it is a 450 cost range, uh, raid, range, I am over here, uh, butchering that, but yeah, it is a 450 cost raid, <laughs> Which um, puts it about 100 cost above the base regular Gelguk. So, you know, just for a little reference on uh, where this suit sits. It is at the same cost as suits like the uh, Jetta and the Gym 3 Powered. And uh, going into it here, you do have the Gelguk Beam Rifle as your main primary weapon. Uh, this is the same Gelguk Beam Rifle that's... Uh, many other Gelguk variations and a couple other suits can use, and it is still a pretty reliable beam rifle. Uh, but on this suit, um, you'll see why. I'm gonna mention it after I go through all the weapons and the skills. Why I think the Gelguk beam rifle, even though I like the weapon itself for this suit, I do wish there was another option. Uh, your next weapon is going to be the beam Naginata enhanced. This is a, well, Beam Naginata, an enhanced version. Again, pretty similar to the Beam Naginata that most of the Gelguk variations can use. Although I do believe this version is exclusive to this suit, and given that it's enhanced, I'm just going to assume it's probably just has some higher damage stats. Uh, typically, I feel like that's how it goes with the enhanced weapons. Uh, I really don't have too much to say about this. It's a pretty good melee weapon. Uh, especially good downswing does have some nice reach for it, so um, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty nice weapon overall. Going on to your sub weapons, your first sub weapon here is going to be the Cracker Grenade Enhanced, and this is a well, is a grenade, and yeah, pretty standard um, weapon. Honestly, you chuck it, and you know it'll explode and do some damage. So really, it's a lot of what you'd expect. It's kind of similar to how the base Gelguk has the, like, uh, I, I forget what type of grenade it is. I think it's just called the Hand Grenade E, unless I'm thinking of the Federation version. But I believe the regular Gelguk has the same grenades that the Zaku 2 FZ has. So it's kind of similar in that remark where you just have a grenade um, sub-weapon. So really just nice if you want to do some extra damage or if you need something to throw... Uh, in between your beam rifle shots, so a uh, pretty alright weapon there. Probably not going to do the most damage unless you're throwing it at supports, but uh, again, just nice for the extra bits of damage it deals. Your next sub weapon is going to be the Beam Naginata Single Blade. This is going to be the most interesting weapon on this suit, and as the name suggests, it is a single bladed version of the Beam Naginata where it actually uses a gyan styled downswing. I believe when it comes to the neutral and side swings, they are the same as the regular Naginata, but that downswing is going to be the Gyan um, Rapid Poke, which is a really neat thing for this suit. I believe it's a reference to the Gundam compilation movie, where I think 
Like, there was the scene where it would be the Gian battle with Amuro and Makuve, but instead it was Shara's Gelguk instead. And when they do the scene with, um, sh um the, you know, the poking scene where he's trying to jab Amuro's Gundam with the beam saber, um, they switched it to Shara instead, where he has the single blade Naginata, which is a really cool thing. And yeah, it's a really neat reference for this suit. And pretty similar to the Gian downswing as well, you are going to do some hefty damage with it. I wouldn't say nearly as much as if you were using the actual Gian, but this suit does have the excuse of having two melee weapons, which is really good to combo with. That's probably one of the strengths I can say with this suit, is that if you are able to get your melee off, you can easily combo with the Naginata and the single bladed version. So yeah, really cool weapon. I do really like this for this suit. Uh, one of the only things I will say about it is that depending on what type of suit you're aiming at, uh, 450 you're still at a cost range where there's a bunch of smaller suits, and the Gilgook itself is already bigger in comparison. So there are chances, depending on what you're aiming at, that you might miss the downswing. Because uh, it's not aiming down, it's like a straight poke, so... Um, yeah, there are some chances for that, but other than that, if you can land it, it is uh, pretty good damage against most units. Even against generals, I feel like it's also to do a pretty hefty uh, number as well. Again, if, especially if you combo into it. And your final sub-weapon, I should say more like a tool. Uh, I always call the shields, you know, sub-weapons when I get to them, but yeah, I feel like they're more like tools or like defensive options as a shield is than you know, really being a weapon. And yeah, you do have the Gelguk shield on the back here. Again, pretty similar to the regular Gelguk. It's mounted to the back instead of being on the arm. And this is a considered a large side shield. And yeah, pretty good to... I would say pretty good depending on the situation. In space matches here, I would say it's a bit more useful because, well... Uh, in space, you do have to worry about your back HP, so I will say in this situation it is something worth having. And I would, even in ground matches sometimes, I did find myself in situations where if somebody did try to attack me from behind, the shield would tank some of that damage. So really it is a nifty thing to have in its own unique way. Uh, it's just not going to be you know the same as if you actually had that shield in front of you. And that's the whole sub-weapon, as I say, say, the whole weapon list there. And just a few things I want to go over for skills is that um, you do have Maneuver Armor level 2, which is good. You have a double dodge roll um, with this suit, which again is also really good. Uh, you have Melee Combo Controller level 2, which is where you have three melee swings, but I do want to mention that this only applies to the regular Naginata and not the single blade. The single blade can only be swung once, so that is something to remember. And before I finish up here with the skills, um, just look at how this space match went. Um, yeah, first place overall with 9 kills and 1 loss. First place in damage, really good space match here. Um, this is really at the time that I really started getting into this suit. And now we're going to go to the uh, ground match here on Colony Drop Area. And as you can see for this match, we did lose somebody, unfortunately, on our team, but it was still a match that went uh, really well. And just finishing up the last thing here, oh, we have Shield Break Stance Mastery, where you don't get staggered if your shield is destroyed. Which is, I think, again, a pretty nifty thing to have. A lot of raids tend to have that skill nowadays, so I don't think it's really the most, you know, like, out there thing for the suit to have. Uh, kind of interesting, though, again, because the shield for this suit is located on the back. But still a welcome skill nonetheless. And then you have EX Boost Level 1, where if you push the touchpad, you'll have, um, you know, a moment of infinite boost for a couple seconds. It's kind of like overboost, but without the consequence of falling over once, you know, your boost does run out. And again, has less time as well. I think it's like 6 seconds around that time for uh, the EX Boost skill. And this is actually a skill I really find myself using a lot with this particular suit. I'm typically not one to use the EX skills like that, but for this suit in particular, yeah, I really did make a lot of use of it. And I think that's really everything I have to say 
like highlighting the suit and really at this point I do want to just talk about my experience with it and again mention why I think the suit was considered to be as bad as it was when it released. Even now I don't think the suit has the best reputation. Uh, that might change now that's in the cycle ticket store and more people can get it and try it. But I mean even then like you know they did buff this suit a few times already in the past so it is something else to keep in mind when talking about this. But um yeah I think just you know the main thing I wanted to wait with the beam rifle that I said I would mention uh, you do not have a regular instant stun with this suit. Your only method of an instant stun is going to be the beam rifle, and that is if you get the full charge. And I think, you know, like, you have no alternate weapons to the beam rifle. It's not like the early production Gelguk where you can put on the um, giant bazooka, or like the regular Gelguk where you can put on the high mobility bazooka, or the high mobility Gelguk which, which can use both of those options. You know, you're just, you're just limited to the beam rifle. And this was something I mentioned in my Saturday stream that, you know, I feel like they could possibly alleviate this if they gave the, um, this version of the Gelguk the stunning grenade. Um, kind of like something like the, um, I know the Hi the Hobby Hyzak has it, and I believe the Psycho Zaku Mark II also has that, um, type of weapon as well, where it's a grenade that it can throw, and it causes an instant stun. So I think that would have been a good method to go about that. I don't know if any of those weapons really existed yet. Like, I don't know if the instant stun grenade was really a thing at the time. Uh, it may have been, it just may have been on a different suit that I don't remember. But yeah, I think that would have been an interesting thing to have on this suit here, and something that I think really would have helped it out in that front. Uh, yeah, and I still think the beam rifle is good, especially in situations where, you know, you can get the stun and go in for your melee combo. But aside from that, yeah, I do think this suit would have benefited from some form of instant stun, especially since it's something that really feels common for, like, raids now. And especially at 450, there were just a lot of suits that have instant stunning weapons. Not all of them, but there is a pretty good number, I feel like, so, uh, yeah, really something to keep in mind, uh, when using this suit. Um, other than that, I think the only other thing I can really say about it is that your resistances are pretty low, uh, in my opinion. You do have 10 ballistic, 18 beam, and 20 melee resistance, which I feel like for the melee and the beam resistance, it's not the worst thing. You could probably beef that up if you wanted to. Uh, ballistic, though, I mean, that is low, but I feel like that's kind of a thing with most suits now, where they will tend to have just one resistance that's very low. Uh, you know, for supports, it'll be, like, low melee resistance and everything else. It will be, like, a low ballistic or beam, unless it's just a pretty basic, like, balanced suit. Because there are some suits that are just, you know, straight balanced with, like, their resistances. Really nothing too crazy, so... Um, yeah, uh, aside from that... Um, yeah, that's kind of my reasonings for why I think this suit just isn't very popular, is mainly for the instant stun and those low resistances. But the thing I've realized when playing it is that you can do quite a bit of damage. I mean, you already saw it with the space match, if you've gone this far in the video, if so, thank you very much. <laughs> but you've already probably seen it with the space match, where this suit can do a hefty amount of damage, and it's like... I think the best thing about it, or like the best way to go about it sometimes, is that you really want to be partnered with somebody. Like you kind of want to be like a buddy suit to somebody else. Somebody who, you know, can help you get those stuns and allow you to move in with your melee. You know, or maybe somebody that can stun somebody, give you the time to charge your beam rifle, and you can follow up with another stun if they use a dodge roll or a tackle. You know, kind of like have to bait them to waste their dodge or tackle. Kind of something like that. So again, if somebody is just using a stun and you are close enough to where you can actually get your melee off, that situation works as well. And I think that's really when the suit does start to shine. Um, like, at first when I started playing it, I was like, eh. 
I was very uh, iffy on it when I started, but as I continued to play matches and I just continued getting better with it, kind of figuring out what strategy to use and how to go about, you know, like things on the battlefield, I, I really kind of started to... I don't, I don't know how to word it. Like, I started liking it a lot more, I think is the most basic way I can put it. Like, I started really just figuring out how to play the suit, doing better, and I think I kind of gained a little bit of a new appreciation for it. Nothing too crazy about it. Like, I still think... I don't know. Like I mentioned, I also use the EX um, boost a lot for this suit as well. Which is, again, something I really don't do when it comes to the touchpad skills. Really, the only other suit that really made me do that was the Blue Destiny Unit 2. So I do think it's succeeding on that front, on, you know, ha having me find a way to play the suit that I typically don't. Uh, other than that, though, I mean, I think overall, it's alright. I don't think it's completely a bad or, like, useless suit. Again, you can do some, like, hefty damage with your melee combos with it. Especially against supports, like, I was able to one-combo supports in some matches just by getting them with the beam rifle, Naginata, single blade into Naginata again. So, I do think it does have its uses. Uh, again, though, I just don't think it's something that's, like, really big or will be a popular pick unless, you know, the devs do make some changes to it. Uh, aside from that, I do like the things it has. Again, I think it's a pretty alright suit overall. And, I mean, I've always been someone to like the Gelgook variants as well. And before I finish up with that, let's just see how this last uh, match went here. Uh, mission failed, unfortunately, but again, that was a match that did go surprisingly well. Did you do top in individual here, and I'm going to be placing two of my teammates. And yeah, second place overall with six kills and two loss. And again, second place in damage, not too bad there. And, um, yeah, as I was about to say, uh, I really do like playing the Gelgook variants in this game. It's one of the reasons I really wanted to try this suit out. Like, early production Gelgook is a suit that I really like and is one that I still play. Uh, Gelgook Jaeger needs no introduction. That's one of my favorite suits to use in this game. And even both of the Gelgook Marine variants as well. Those are both just suits that I still occasionally like to get out and use. So this suit here, I feel like, is going to be one I want to keep messing around with, keep practicing with it, because I've noticed that I was getting better, and like, I think just, again, it's one of those things, it's like, you just have to look at it at a new light, and really just uh, find some different ways to play this suit, and really just see, you know, what you can do with it. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video here. Uh, comment down below what you think about Shars Gelgook. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Later.